everyone at that time, I think, was driving Golfs or Peugeots, right? These cars didn't really have a cult following, so they were uh, um, a wolf in sheep's clothing, you know? uh, maybe seen as a little bit of, a, of an old man's car. And getting one of these and pulling up to uni, no one had them. So for me, it was kind of like being a bit of a, uh, a, bit of a cult. Um, and then when people used to try and race me in their Golfs and their 1.9s and you used to bluff them, they're like, what the hell is under that hood? So I was the first one to get a BM in, a, in our family, but my dad was never really, <clears throat> he's keen now, but back in the day, he wasn't lanky. You know, go and get something else, go and get something reliable. This never used to give us grief, um, but because we used to drive them hard, something was always breaking, isn't it? And for them, it was, it was an excuse to have a dig, you know? uh, But dad being in the mechanical mind, I learned a lot. So I cut my teeth on these cars, right? Learning how they, you know, how they kind of, you know, are put together uh, mechanical stuff as well, isn't it? We used to do as much as we can, proper, you know, dukus, isn't it? We're not taking it anywhere, is it? I do it cheaper, and you, but that's the only way you learn, and that's so every Saturday or weekend when something broke, my dad, you know, at first used to get annoyed, but I saw it more as a learning curve, and I, and I think it actually, in a weird way, it helps you build a rapport up. So, you know, me and my dad built a, built a relationship up around the car. The blue one, that came up and um, I, I looked at it and it just reminded me, I started reminiscing. So it was in Norfolk, so me and my dad went down to see it and I sat in the car, drove it and it just all came back to me and I thought, you know what, these cars have so much soul and character and that's it and I've just been smitten. I've had about 10, um, yeah, 10 since then. And uh, you know, people are kind of saying now, they've, these cars have now gone to a, uh, to a place where the, uh, you know, the market value is, is, is kind of going up and uh, I think, you know, we've kind of contributed to putting some of these back on the road. So these are pictures of my uh, 21st birthday party um, um, with me, me and Just and a few of the, uh, few of the boys when we was driving around in our, in our E28s, brings out some really, really, <laughs> really good memories. Um, yeah, it's interesting, it only seems like yesterday, uh, about 20 odd years ago. So this particular uh, picture, right? So we're driving home through Ealing uh, and uh, just goes, I'm still hungry. I go, dude, we've just eaten about, we must have demolished about six or seven pizzas, so we stopped off and had even more pizzas and this particular picture is really, really natural because um, I've got a massive grin on my face, like I'm just about to say something and just is about to hold my arm to say something and then we've got the, uh, got the white car uh, behind us. Um, but yeah, so that is a uh, that, that, that to me sums up my friendship with Just and our, and our love for these, for these particular cars, Baji, to be honest. You know, Cav's a good friend of mine. We go back many years, you know, since we were 12 and 13. And he's been telling me, when are you buying one of these? When are you buying one of these? Um, and I said, Cav, look, if I see a nice black one, I'll buy that. Um, so I was up in uh, the Lake District last year, away on a family holiday, and I get a text message from Cav. He says, um, there's a black one going. So I had a look, we exchanged emails. Um, three days later, I'd imported this car from the Isle of Man and it was sat in Liverpool um, near the docks when I went to look at it. And when I got there, you know what? I was so glad I did that. Um, you know, sat in the car, brought back all the memories of my own E28 back from 97, you know, when I was in my 20s um, and drove it back 300 and odd miles. Didn't skip a beat. It's got no major electronics. You start it up, you know, it's got a few dials. Everything's in front of you um, and away you go. Um, you know, these cars, they're just built from a different material. The way they drive, the way they sound, the way they handle. You've got to drive the car. It's not, yeah, it's got power steering, but, you know, you, you still have to, you know, move it through the corners. You've got to, it's not an auto, so it's a manual and it's a dog leg. So, You've got to know where the gears are and yeah, it's just it's such a nice feeling driving the car. These cars have real soul. Um, you know, it's the start of the key, it's the sound of that straight six, you know, cylinder engine under the car, it's, it's the dog leg box. It's just the way the car communicates with you, it lets you know what's going on. Um, and you don't get that with modern cars, so it's th that's why I just like driving these cars when I can, come rain or shine. So I brought this car completely standard, uh, 
um, and I wanted to put my own stamp on this. So um, I've changed the suspension, so it's running coilovers, front and rear. I put 17 inch split rim AC Snitzer wheels on there with Radinox dishes. I fitted six pop brakes up front. I put four pop Porsche brakes on the rear. I've changed the interior. I've got some Recaro C81s in here. They've all been retrimmed in white leather. I've got wood put on the doors. I got a DSP uh, uh, system in there. Uh, with an Alpine cassette deck and a CD changer, six branch manifold, um, stainless steel exhaust, original dealer stickers, um, leather the top of the, the door card. So I've taken what a great car was back in the 80s and brought it up to what this car would probably look like if it was rolled off the production line today. So that's, that's the reason why I've done it. And it enhances the driver experience for me because when you go from a modern car into an old car and you put your foot on the brakes and nothing happens, you kind of think, hmm, there's something I need to address here. So that, that's one of the main reasons. So it's not just for aesthetics, it's more so for driving pleasure as well. Obviously, you know, I've got a passion in cars. My kids, I've got a 13 year old daughter, 12 year old son, He's, he looks at cars and he appreciates them. Whereas my daughter, she's, you know, she's, yeah, it's a car. Uh, but I remember a couple of weeks back when I got it back from the garage and um, brought it home and we went out for a drive. She actually said, you know what, this is such a nice car. And she has never said that of any car that, you know, she's been in or, or, or we've had. And, and she said, yeah, I get why you've spent so much time and effort on this. It just looks sweet. And you know what, that touched me. I thought, yeah, for her to say, that means something.